Hey, I'm Dan from MapTech, and today we're going to look at calculating drill hole deviation rates from your existing drilling data using the new Deviation Calculation Manager tool in Vulcan 2021.2. This video is the first in a series I've really creatively called Drill Hole Planning with Dan, where I'm going to walk you through the new drill hole planning tools in Vulcan and how to use them effectively. Now, if you've ever spent any time reviewing downhole survey information, it's probably safe to say you've noticed drill holes are really straight. Due to the torque or the rotation of the drill bit on the rock, as well as the type of rock material itself, holes tend to deviate. This means if we just plan a straight line from the collar of the hole to the desired target location, it's entirely possible that we might actually miss the target we're trying to hit. So when we're planning new drill holes for our deposit, it's important that we factor in this deviation to our design so we can ensure our drill holes actually end up where we want them to. The best way to account for this deviation is to take a look at all the other holes we've already drilled, as this should give us a decent guide as to what sort of deviation to expect. Now, historically, we'd have to open up Excel maybe run some manual calculations on a selection of holes, but that can be pretty time consuming. And if you've got several drill rigs on the go, chances are you won't have time to keep your spreadsheet up to date. Now, you might be lucky enough to have had someone on site who fancied themselves as a bit of a programmer, and they may have written a script to run some calculations automatically. But what if they've left the company and no one else really knows or cares enough about the script to figure out why it all of a sudden stopped working? Well, thankfully, with the release of Vulcan 2021.2, there's now a tool built into the software to analyze your existing drill holes and calculate the average deviation rates for you. So let's take a look. The Deviation Calculation Manager lives in the Geology Drill Hole Planning menu. So the idea behind this tool is not to just simply analyze and calculate the average deviation rates from our existing drilling, but also to store these rates in a specification file we can later use to apply deviation when planning our future drill holes. So first I'll create a specification file and a scenario ID to store my deviation rates in. So then I'm gonna select my drill hole database that I wanna interrogate, bearing in mind that I can use a pattern like I'm using in this case. You can use a selection file or an exclusion file to filter the drill holes that you want to use. Now, if you want a bit more info on applying name pattern filters or selection files, you can check out the relevant section of the Vulcan help by clicking on the little question mark at the bottom of the panel here. And we can see there's a bit of info there for us. In this case though, I'm just going to use the default wildcard pattern to select all the drill holes in my database. So when calculating the deviation rates, the azimuth and the dip rates are calculated independently. Although as you'll see in a moment, one is factored into how the other is calculated. So here in this dip and azimuth breakdown increment section, I need to decide what increments I want to split my dip and azimuth deviation rates into. Now you can make these whatever you like, and this will vary depending on how much drilling data you've got in your database. For example, if you don't have many holes and they're all oriented in a similar direction, then you could probably bump up the increments and put everything into a few bins. But in this particular database, I've got quite a lot of holes. I think there's maybe eight and a half thousand holes or something and quite a wide range of orientations. So I'll stick with the default breakdown values of 10 degree bins for the dip and 20 degree bins for the azimuth. The advantage of doing this too is that I end up with the same number of bins for my azimuth and my dip, which looks neat, so that's nice. For now, I'm going to leave this varied deviation rate with downhole depth option alone, but I'll circle back to this a bit later. So I can give you a visual of what this tool is doing. I'm going to use the export drill hole selection file option, and that's going to output drill hole selection files for each of the breakdown increment bins. So now I can hit calculate, and the tool will go away and calculate the average deviation rates for each of my ASI and dip increment bins. So now we can see in the Edit Deviation Rates tab that the average deviation rates have been calculated for both my azimuth and my dip within each of their respective bins. What you'll also notice here is that these bins have been further split into four quadrants, as this allows for more localized control over the dip and azimuth deviation rates calculated and used. 
Largely because in deposits where drilling occurs in multiple orientations, it's important to compare data drilled in similar orientations as depending on the geology, the azimuth at which the hole is drilled can impact the deviation observed in the dip. What I mean by this is if we take a look at this beach ball looking image in the help here, we're looking at the azimuth quadrants as they relate to the calculated dip deviation rates. So let's say I have a drill hole dipping at minus 60 degrees. Now I can have a hole that's dipping at minus 60 in each of these azimuth quadrants, which if looking at a highly foliated deposit that's striking north to south and dipping at minus 45 degrees, would likely mean I'd experience fairly different deviation rates in my dip while drilling in say this green quadrant here than I would in this purple quadrant here. What we also have in this table is the number of drill holes in each bin that we use to calculate the deviation rates. Seeing how many holes we have found in each bin can help identify any deviation rates that may perhaps be less reliable as there weren't many holes in that bin and the deviation rate maybe doesn't seem to follow the trend of the surrounding bins. So for example, my deviation rate here in the 180 to 200 degree uh, bin, it's only got 11 holes, right? We can sort of see from the number of holes here and it doesn't really fit with the rates around it, and, and it's quite a high rate. So this is change in azimuth per meter that we're looking at here. Now there could be several reasons for this. Perhaps some of the downhole surveys from one or two of the holes in this bin were affected by magnetics and hadn't been smoothed out to be more realistic. Again, it'd be something I'd need to go away and investigate, and then I can make an informed decision to maybe manually edit this particular deviation rate to something more reasonable and that fits with the trends I can see in the data. So in this case, I may change the rate to something like minus 0.01, uh, as that sort of sits more in between the rates of the bins either side. Similarly, I'd probably want to go and look and adjust this value here. There's only five holes and the number's ridiculous. Uh, I'd imagine you'd be likely to be getting drill rods stuck uh, if you were seeing a degree of deviation per meter with standard drilling. Now I mentioned when I ran the calculations that I was going to export selection files for each of my deviation rate bins. So if I open my project directory here and we look in the folder, you can see I've got a bunch of selection files in there for each of my azimuth and dip bins. Okay, so we can use that to get a visual guide of what the holes look like. So if I come in and I load my drill holes, I can use any of these selection files from my folder. And if I have a look in there, it loads just those holes that were in that selection file. So that's one of my azimuth bins in there. And you can see this relates to, at the collar, they're all drilled in a similar orientation. So I'll just remove those. And we're just gonna go back into the deviation calculation manager here. And I'll bring up my spec file from before. Now, I'm going to circle back to this very deviation rate with downhole depth option. What this does is this allows me to define some depth thresholds that will essentially calculate separate deviation rates for different depths down the drill holes within each bin. So where this could be useful would be if you've got a bunch of drilling from a similar area in your mine, then you may have a significant change in the geology around a certain depth downhole that has a big impact on the deviation of the holes. So you may filter the drill holes a bit first to create a selection file. Uh, the, the Create, Modify, Locate tool in the Geology Drilling Utilities menu is pretty great for this if you haven't used it before. Uh, and then you can determine the downhole depth thresholds to use when calculating the deviation rates. So in this case, I might just add uh, 100 and maybe 200. And we're working in meters in this example. And if I rerun my calculation now, so you can see I've got three separate depth thresholds now for each of my azimuth bin values. So 0 to 100, 100 to 200, and then anything greater than 200. Well, I think that covers just about everything for the Deviation Calculation Manager. So I'll leave this video here, and I'll catch up with you in the next video in the series where we'll look at the Drill Rig Setup Specification Tool. Cheers.